Hi everybody, uh, gonna replace some U-joints on the Ford F-150 2013. Uh, I'm noticing when I take it in and out of gear at a standstill while on the brake, it, it creaks pretty loudly. Uh, it doesn't creak anywhere else, bouncing up and down, going around corners, just forward and backwards. So, uh, might not be the U-joints, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace them anyway. And to do that, you have to take out the entire drive shaft. It's a pretty simple procedure. Um, I'll show you the tools that you need, but basically you, four bolts on the back flange that hold it in, take those off. That's probably the hardest part. Depending on the kind of tools that you have, you slip the drive shaft out and then you should rent a uh, ball joint compression tool, which can also be used to press out and in your new U-joints, and you can rent that at AutoZone for free. Uh, that's what I did. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at our tools. Here's the new U-joint we're going to be putting in here. Um, these are made by Spicer, which is a really good brand, especially if you do a lot of off-roading, you're familiar with those. Uh, they do come with new clips that we'll put in. And then uh, this is the tool here that you can rent from your auto parts store. Um, it looks like a big giant C-clamp, but it's got little openings on the end, you know, and that's so that the ends of your U-joint, the caps, can slip through that. And then take it out, 12 millimeter box end wrench, 12 point, the bolts are actually 12 point and uh, they're pretty hard to get off because not so much the torque or the rust, but because they've got thread locker, they're the hard way to do it. So I'm gonna use a little cheater bar here. Depending on how difficult they are to get off, the longer bar you need and the more room that you need underneath it. But we're gonna crawl up underneath here and uh, break these bolts off. Crawl up under here like this where I can get my leg on this wheel for leverage, which you're gonna need. Put this on here like this. Put your pipe on. Get a good grip on it. And break it loose. And that is all you need to do. So then you rotate it where you can get to the other four and those will come right out. Sometimes people heat them with propane torches to loosen up the uh, thread locker on it. I also put a little bit of uh, penetrating oil, PB blaster, in all of these joints last night just to kind of prep them so these will be easy to take out. But once you take this off, we're gonna drop the drive shaft down and slide it out of the back of the transfer case. Rotated this a little bit here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark this here <clears throat> so we can put it back in the same way. Just put a little notch there so I can see it here, and also here. Now, I will tell you that this drive shaft is balanced and it's aluminum so you don't want to dent it or beat it up <clears throat> and this this idea of having everything put back the same way um, i'm personally a little skeptical about i can see this matching this but um, the way it goes on the yoke i'm not as convinced only because if you ever have to replace this yoke or anything it's a new yoke so there's nothing to line up and it's not balanced and matched to the drive shaft so but we'll do it anyway just because other other people have mentioned that so why not it's easy to do uh also check it out uh this ranch is already bent um so you can see takes a little bit of force to get it off and hopefully we can get through this without breaking too many wrenches I have another one in case we do. Same thing as before. Just 
Look at that. It bent the wrench back straight. How about that? One more and we're home free here. Look at that. Tell me those are not in there tight, but depending on your truck and rust and whether or not you used any kind of PB blaster or any other penetrating oil, these ought to come out pretty easy. I've got a little ratchet closed in wrench that I may use. Probably should have it down here with me. That's just the rust on the back coming out of this thing, giving us a little bit of a trouble here. Once it clears that, we're good to go. Now, easier way to do this is to go ahead and take them out. I went ahead and broke them all over and then rotated the drive shaft, and that's probably a mistake. As you can see. I nicked my thumb. There's a little blood on it. And I did not do it on this. I did it opening up a my little package to get my things out of here. All right, so now these things are a little stubborn. We're just gonna you go falls right out so now we're gonna pull it backwards out of the back of the transfer case should come out real easy and you might get a little bit of oil dripping I do I'm surprised it was no more oil than that so probably need to check my transmission fluid but that's it the trans the uh, drive shaft is out now so we're gonna pull it out here and take it down to the shop and put our new U-joints in. Just while I'm taking this thing down to my workshop, I'm just gonna hit it a little bit with PB Blaster on these guys. They look in pretty good shape, so this is probably not really even needed. going to do it anyway. Okay, we'll take it down. So the first thing we're going to do is take these C-clips out. Uh, they're pretty easy. They make a tool for it, make it a lot easier. You can get them out with a pair of pliers, regular pliers, needle nose pliers. Uh, but a little trick you can do before then is if you've put some oil in here, that helps. But you can just loosen these up because they're often rusted into the grooves. So loosen them up where you can see it spin around a little bit in there. And then you can just grab them 
like this and wrestle them out. So we'll do that to all of the sides here. You don't want to get your face over it or it can uh, pop you in the eye if they spring loose. This is a, a center punch that I'm using, but I'm being careful. I'm this, These are old caps, so what do I care if I do something wrong to them? Okay, so now we have them all out, and I'm going to clean these up a little bit with a wire brush here. And then uh, we're going to get the press out, put it together, and press these out. The more you can get out of the inside, the easier it is to see what's going on. And putting a little more oil in there only because now that we've removed those C-clips, I have a chance to put a little bit more in there. It's not really necessary, but the more you do, the better. So now we're going to get our press out, and we're going to press these out. What we're going to do is we're going to press it from one direction. The cap comes out on the other side. And then you kind of have to wrestle the cap out with a pair of channel locks or something like that, usually. And then you push it back to the other side and do the same thing, and then you can take the piece out of the middle. So now we're going to use our tool here that we rented, <clears throat> ball joint compressor, but also for U-joints. It's got a regular plunger on the one end. It's basically just a big heavy-duty C-clamp. Importantly, on the other end is a hole, and that hole needs to line up on the opposite side in such a way that the cap can go through uh, without binding on the clamp, the compressor. If it does, then it won't go through. So you want to check it, and it may move around on you when you're doing this. Now, <clears throat> for me, I just tried this with my impact wrench, and they're in there pretty tight and I couldn't get them to press through. So now I'm gonna have to use my ratchet here with a cheater bar. And push them through. That popping noise is normal. It's a little scary though when you first hear it, but it relaxes a little bit more as it's pushing through. So now it's about all the way over as far as it's gonna go. So we'll back this back off. Okay. Then we 
what you can see is it's pushed all the way over, but the cap of this is sticking out this way. So we're going to take a pair of channel locks and wrestle it the rest of the way out. And that was a whole lot easier than what I was expecting, but there's your cap. So now that we have that one done, we can't fully take it apart. So now we have to push it back the other way. So we'll just reverse the procedure, push the cap out of the other side. Now we got it back on there and lined up. Now we're pushing it the other way. This is easier because you've only got one cap surface to go through instead of two. Pull it through. And I'm just gonna check here to make sure. Yeah, see my, my clamp here is a little off center and it's binding, so that is what you wanna watch out for. We're gonna loose it a little bit. Put it back on there. Like that. And away we go. Same thing, you go all the way over and go so we'll Middle piece stops like that. Take our compressor off. Put it around here and you can see it. Take the cap out. Now that frees it up. So we've got our yoke off of the end. And we'll do the same thing with this. Now the thing with this though, this is cast iron. Um, so we're gonna clean this up too. So we can be a little more aggressive with it. This is aluminum though. So we wanna be real careful with this one, but we'll basically repeat the same procedure there. Same thing on this end. There's your front yoke that goes in the transmission or transfer case. Transfer case in my situation. So we just have one left to do here. Give you a better picture while we do this last one. Gonna pop in a second. Okay. That's normal. You just want to make sure when you're doing this that nothing's really binding up on that aluminum. These things fit in there so precision that you might be twisting on them thinking they won't come out, but a lot of times you can just pull them straight out. So they got a little suction in there so they're easier to take out than you might think they are. On to the last one. I'm going to clean up these yokes a little bit and uh, one thing I'll show you is uh, there's a little nick right there. There's two of them and the reason for that is I went a little too far pushing the U-joint over and it cut into that inside side, side wall. And that's a common thing that does happen if you're not careful. I tried to be careful. This is the only place where um, I made that mistake, but we're gonna grind that off a little bit and smooth it out because you don't want any kind of burrs or, or anything like that to prevent the new caps from going in smoothly. So we'll take care of that. 
So before we put the new U-joints in place, there's a couple of things that we want to do. Uh, one is the grease that comes with these is really only there to hold those needle bearings in so they don't fall out. Um, so you want to be careful when you take these caps off and put them on um, or you'll have needle bearings fall out and it's kind of a awkward to put them back together. But um, also pump your joints up with grease, a good quality grease. I like to use this Mobile One Synthetic. Uh, this is another good brand. Um, but make sure you know what grease you're putting in there. Pump them all the way through until you see grease coming out of the ends there. And then when you put it back together, you can give it one final squeeze and you can pump in new grease into those joints. Don't trust the grease that came with them. Um, go ahead and put your good grease in there. So now we're going to put it back together, which is essentially the reverse procedure of taking it apart, except it's a whole lot easier. Remember, just want to go down past where the clip ring is. Just about right there. Not quite enough. I need to go down just a little bit more. Mm -mm. So we got our clips in. So that part's done. Now we're gonna put our yoke back on. Again, putting it in the same orientation that we took it off. We've got one cap on this side and we're gonna take our tool and we're just going to gently push it through. Remember we're, once again, we are only trying to get it past the clip and that's it. tapping very hard and that's supposed to free up any tension that might be built up in there and I don't know it may be it does feel a little bit looser so maybe that helped uh, so this side is done so now we're going to do the same thing on the other side we're going to put it back in now lost power on my camera so a couple of things I wanted to show you is I gave them a couple of pumps of grease once I got it all installed and you want to see a little bit of grease come out of the grease seals around the bearing uh, but don't overdo it clean all that off so it doesn't collect dirt and so forth and then the other thing is you you want to make sure your you know your bearings are not stiff you know everything should turn freely not necessarily loose it's okay if it's a little bit stiff but you don't want it to be so stiff that it feels like it's in a bind if it is you need to take a hammer and sort of wrap around the these little um, ears here uh, because it usually means that the cup is not seated right it's sort of at an angle so if you tap it it frees up any tension and that. 
So now the drive shaft is in. Now we're going to connect the back. <clears throat> We've got our mark here and our mark right here. And so we're going to line those up just like it came off. Slide it back. Now the one thing is these bolts, I'm going to put this one in just to kind of hold it in place. Get this one going. This is not the permanent stuff. This is removable. Don't need to overdo it. A little bit is enough. Put these in there as far as I can by hand. Now I'm gonna go back and take this one back out. Now that I've got the other two in, I'm gonna put Loctite on it. Oop, that was a little bit much, but that'll be fine. Better too much than not enough. Okay, take my ratchet here. We're just gonna get these snug, not even really tight at all. All right, so just gonna rotate the drive shaft here and make sure these are all good and tight before I give them the final torque down. And I'll put the emergency brake on to hold those wheels while I do that. Okay, so those are all tight. Gonna put the emergency brake on now. Emergency brake is on. And uh, anytime I'm torquing something down like this or on anything, I like to do a crisscross star pattern to make sure that nothing gets warped. So I'm going to do these opposite ones here first. one these need to be torqued down to about 60 to 70 foot pounds but good luck getting a torque wrench on all of these and that's why we use Loctite all right so now they're all tight and uh, I'm just going to take it up for a little quick test drive. 